Daniel is one of the interesting principles in the Bible. He's one of the minor prophets, but he was a major of the minor prophets. Daniel first comes on the scene in captivity of Babylon, and he and those who would later become known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to eat the king's meat. And the Lord sent a miracle that Daniel and those fellows uh, fared just as well on the pulse that they were eating as the king's meat, and then became favorable among the king. You'll remember it was Daniel that could give the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed that great statute and, and tried to discern what it all meant, and of course... Uh, Every facet of that statue uh, represented a, a great world power throughout human history on down to the toes, which will be the United uh, Federation or Kingdom in Europe, uh, which will happen when the Antichrist comes on the scene. We find that Daniel also uh, gets thrown in the lion's den. We find that Daniel also interpreted Belshazzar's dream, the handwriting on the wall. Daniel also is an instrument in prophecy, can't hardly understand Revelation without a, uh, an understanding of Daniel. And in Daniel chapter number 12, he gives us a lot of insight to the Antichrist. And he also lets us know about the great tribulation period, the 70th week, uh, in which he entitles it a time of Jacob's trouble. So Daniel's a very interesting, interesting principle or character in the Bible. Tonight I want to look at that very familiar story that's often told in children's Sunday school, but us adults uh, uh, think we've outgrown it. But I want to look at this story of Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel chapter number 6. We'll begin reading verse 16. The Bible says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake, and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought, and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel, and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee. O king, have I done no hurt. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, sometimes we get caught up in reading about how you delivered Daniel from the lion's den and you did great miracles in the Bible and we fail to realize you're the same God today. God, you're able to do for us exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God, we're glad that you're alive and well. God, we're glad you're on your throne. We're glad you're still in control. I appreciated the devotion this morning on the, our, our app. And God, uh, I'm thankful, Lord, you're at work. Uh, and you're at work in every minute detail of everything in the universe. Uh, and God, we bless your holy name. I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. You'd speak to hearts. I pray you'd be glorified. And I certainly pray, and Lord, folks would do business with God. I pray especially if there be any amongst us unsaved, lost without Christ that today would be the day of salvation. Bless now, have your will and way, we'll bless you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen, amen. There's a few things I want you to see as a way of introduction. 
I want you to notice, first of all, as we pointed out, there's a den of lions. Again, in verse 16, uh, the king commanded, they brought Daniel and cast him into a den of lions. Can I say this was not a den of kitty cats? Even though sometimes kitty cats can be ferocious. Hmm? It's not a den of puppy dogs. It's not a den of stuffed animals. Uh, it is a literal den with literal lions. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been over at the zoo, and I've looked at those things pretty up close. It's a good thing they got that big thing of glass, and you can look at them. Their paws are as big as my head. Huh? Their teeth are humongous. The lion's not called the king of the jungle because he's a little sissy. Hmm? So Daniel literally went to the lion's den. And can I say, you and I, sometimes we go through things that are not comfortable, but none of us have ever been in a den of lions. We see that. I want you to notice the distraught king, verses 18 through 20. You find he doesn't sleep. No music was brought to comfort him. We find that this distraught king was up all night. Uh, and first light, he's down there, and he cries out, uh, uh, Daniel, the, is thy God, able, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee? Now, it's interesting. Now, now look with me back uh, uh, in verse 16. Uh, it says, Now the king spake uh, and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And then look with me down there uh, uh, in verse number 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable of voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Now something happened. Verse 16, it sounded like he had a lot of faith. But in verse 20, it looks like he's got a lot of doubt. Can I say that? That happens with a lot of people. You come to church, and boy, you, you, you pop your suspenders. You know God's big. Uh, you know God's able. Uh, 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 you leave out of here saying, boy, God's going to help me this week. But by Wednesday, boy, is God able to help me this week? Hmm? Can I say it's nothing new? That's why, my dear friends, faith is based upon the facts of the Word of God, not our feelings and our emotions. Verse 16, the king's, yeah, your God's able. Verse 20, he's not slept all night, and he's wondering, is God really able? Now, I have brought this out, unless you're new to the church, you've heard this, but can I say for those that are new, why would a Persian king care about a Jewish man and his God? Really? Why would he care? Why would he, why would he even acknowledge that Daniel, he said, whom the God that thou service will be able to deliver you? Why would he even be concerned? Amen. Well, if you go back and you look a couple chapters earlier when Belteshazzar, the Babylonian king, uh, son of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he's partying and having a big old time, a big old feast. He took the precious uh, uh, vessels that had come out of the house of God in Israel uh, and, they, and he's desecrating them and he's filling them with wine and he's making mockery uh, and God sends a handwriting on the wall uh, 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 and uh, all the soothsayers of Babylon and all the false prophets of Babylon did not know the interpretation uh, and the king said he'd give royal garments uh, and a big uh, uh, necklace, all kinds of uh, treasures to the man that could interpret it. And in comes Daniel. Uh, he said, O king, thou have been weighed in the balances that are found wanting, uh, and this night thy life shall be required of thee. Uh, and he, the king lived up to it, gave Daniel all the treasures. Uh, that night, uh, here comes Darius, uh, 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 the king of Persia. Uh, uh, they invade the land. They overthrow Babylon. Uh, Darius, uh, uh, Belteshazzar, and all of his court is taken out and murdered. Now, under the custom of the day, they should have took Daniel too. He's wearing royal apparel. Why didn't he kill Daniel? And then we get to this chapter, up about verse number 3, he sets Daniel 
above all the princes of his courtship. Why would he take a Jewish prisoner and make him a prince? We've got to know who Darius is. If you study it out, you'll find Darius is the son of Ahasuerus. So, who's Ahasuerus? He was the king who married a little Jewish maid by the name of Esther. Darius is Esther's son. Darius has grown up in the palace with a godly mother, even more so than that, uh, uh, Mordecai, who was her uncle, who really was more like a grandpa to Darius. Uh, uh, Mordecai was telling about evil Haman uh, and how God delivered the Jews uh, and how God had delivered them from Egypt, uh, how God had parted the Red Sea, uh, how great God was. Uh, Darius, as a little boy, hears all the stories of the great God Jehovah, but now Darius is an old man. He's 70 years old uh, when he comes into that room and destroys uh, uh, Belteshazzar. Uh, uh, listen, he sees Daniel uh, and something, Brother Jim, about Daniel reminded him of Papa Mordecai. Uh, he said there's something different about him. Uh, the more he gets to know him, uh, he realizes he's a believer in the true and living God. Uh, he exalts him to prince in all of uh, uh, Persia and he just says, your God is able to deliver you because he delivered the Jews out of Egypt. He's delivered his people at every turn. That's the God I was raised to know about. And all night long he wonders, was Papa Mordecai telling me the truth? Is God really able? And he goes down there and he hollers that to Daniel, first light of that morning, is your God able? He said, old king, live forever. My God shut the lion's mouth. Uh, that's why he cared. And that's why you study your Bible, friends. All this means something. God wasn't born and just wrote a book named Daniel. It's all very important. We see the distraught uh, king. We see the den of lions. Notice the deliverance of verse 21. Uh, uh, he said, O king, live forever. My God has sent uh, his angels. Shut the lion's mouth. They have not hurt me. Uh, uh, we find the deliverance of Daniel. What a blessing. But then notice the doom of his persecutors. Look at verse 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and cast them into the den of lions, them and their children and their wives. And the lion had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. That word or ever means before ever. So before their bones even hit the bottom of the den, I mean before their bodies hit the bottom of the den, they'd already destroyed them. That gives a, a little bit of evidence to the crowd that says, well, what, no problem, them lions wasn't hungry that night. Well, it looks like it's pretty hungry to me. Uh, now, couple schools of thought these are the other princes that were jealous of Daniel and so they made a little plot against him got him thrown into the den of lions thought that would be the end of him listen the Bible says this very very clearly be sure your sins will find you out yeah. and can I say this no man lives unto himself no man dies unto himself uh, how you act does affect your family your sin does affect your family. Your failing God does affect others around you, friend. Amen. Those fellows not only went to the lion's den, so their wives and children. Yes. Say, their children were innocent. It didn't matter. That's how they did business back then. Hmm? If you transgressed, your whole family suffered for it. Yeah. And by the way, it's still true today. Not in this economy, but in God's economy. Hmm? Right. I'm interested there in verse 24 in that word mastery. It says, uh, And they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them. That word mastery means dominion over. 
It means superior, superiority in competition. It means victorious in war. It means eminent skill and superior dexterity. Now these fellows designed a plan that Daniel would end up in the lion's den, which he did. But see, Daniel didn't go to the lion's den alone. He went with God. The problem is, is these fellows didn't go alone either. But they went without God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10.8, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Let me just say for a minute, you better be careful trying to dig a pit for somebody else to fall into. Because the Bible said you're going to fall in it. And the Bible also says, Whosoever breaketh the hedge, the serpent by the... Do you realize the hedge represents the perfect will of God? Do you realize the perfect will of God for all of us is to serve the Lord and put God first in our lives? Uh, and can I say it is the perfect will of God for us to have our place in His church? Uh, and it's a dangerous thing when we break the hedge of the threshold uh, of the will of God for our lives... Uh, because there's a serpent out there waiting to bite us. Amen. Mm, I've seen it happen many a times, friend. Now listen, that, that mastery, those lions dominated those people. Yes, See, the angel wasn't there to shut their mouths. Can I say that those lions destroyed those people? Can I say that those lions, without being too crude, they dined on those people? This is my thought tonight. I want to preach on so many lions and so few Daniels. So many lions and so few Daniels. Can I say you find lions everywhere in this world? Can I say you can even find lions in the church house? They want to dominate people. They want to destroy people. They want to dine on people. You all remember that message I preached on them fowls? One of them fowls is a buzzard. A buzzard feasts on dead things. Can I say, people around the house of God, and all they want to talk about is somebody's past? Feasting on dead things? Huh? Can I say, if somebody has been forgiven of their sins, they have no past in Christ? So somebody that constantly wants to bring up a past, they're a buzzard or a lion. Huh? They're dining on dead things. But can I say that mm, you find lions everywhere. You'll find them on your job. You'll find them in, in uh, places of authority. You'll find them in Hollywood. You might even find them in your own household. There's so many lions. But unfortunately, there's so few Daniels. There's so few who are really not bothered by the lions. Yet, yet rather the lions are bothered by them. Can you imagine them lions in that den? They were trying to eat Daniel. They wanted to eat Daniel. They wanted him so bad. But the angel just had their mouth shut. Didn't say they were asleep. Didn't say they weren't pawing at the floor trying to get to him. Said an angel had shut their mouths. Huh? I, I know one thing, when God shuts somebody's mouth, He knows how to shut it. Huh? Amen. They wanted Daniel. They just couldn't have him. Huh? Because Daniel already belonged to somebody else. Hmm? You know why so many people uh, struggle from Sunday to Wednesday? They're not a Daniel. Hmm? Huh? You know why so many people, their prayers aren't answered? They're not a Daniel. You know why so many people don't overcome? They're not a Daniel. Hmm? My challenge is tonight, let's become Daniels. There's so many lions, so few Daniels. You know what this world needs? More Daniels. Huh? More Daniels. What's the whole principle of this story? Daniel came out of lion's den, didn't he? Huh? You know what this world needs to see? Us walking out of lion's dens. Huh? So, if we're going to be a Daniel, Daniel's defined by several things that happened long before he ever ended up in that den. 
Can I say, first of all, Daniel's defined by his fiber. Hmm? Look with me in verse number 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Hmm? Can I say the very fiber of Daniel was he had an excellent spirit? Hmm? He didn't have a woe is me spirit. He didn't have a, a proud spirit. He didn't have a, a blasphemous spirit. He didn't have a spirit that was angry. He didn't have a spirit that was a victim. Hey, if anybody had some right to have a victim mentality, it would have been Daniel. I mean, he'd come out of the Babylonian. I mean, he was uh, overthrown by the Babylonians. Here he's a young man, uh, and he's a slave in Babylon. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the king takes advantage of him there, but God blesses him. Uh, and uh, 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 when it looked like maybe he'd get out of the Babylonian kingdom, now he's a slave in Persia. But yet, once again, God has favor on him. Uh, uh, look, uh, my dear friends, uh, 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 yeah, we've all been victims by something uh, but we're living in the blessings of God uh, we're living on the greatest country to face the earth uh, we've got God's word uh, we got the spirit of God living in us uh, God's been good to all of us uh, we've got a good church family uh, hey we have no reason to be a victim uh, sure you can look around and say boy I wish I had this wish I had that uh, wish this was better wish that was better uh, you know how to make it better uh, become a Daniel just have an excellent spirit uh, he was promoted uh, and preferred by the king uh, because an excellent spirit was found in him uh, the king of kings uh, might shine on you uh, if you got an excellent spirit found within you uh, Paul said no matter what he, whether he was abased uh, 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 low uh, or when he was abounding blessed uh, he was content uh, and contentment uh, with godliness is great gain huh? listen you that's all down in the mouth you don't have to look very far and somebody's in a lot worse shape than you somebody's got it worse than you uh, you ought to praise God that you got it as good as you got it because we ought to all be in hell with our back broke tonight uh, but he had an excellent spirit. Uh, can I say this? I like being around people that have an excellent spirit. I like being around people that are happy, that are upbeat, that got a smile on their face. I like being around folks that even when they're going through it, you don't know it. I just like being around folks like that. You know who I don't like being around? People that bring me down. Uh, don't, don't care for it. Huh? Sometimes I find myself around them. Uh, I'd just rather be around somebody happy, happy, happy than crabby, crabby, crabby. Uh, can I say his very fiber caused him to rise above anything that came into his life? Because he didn't look at the circumstances, he looked at God. Hmm? His very fiber is what defined him. Can I say something else that defined Daniel was his faithfulness? Look at verse number 4. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. You know what would be a real blessing? Is when the lions and the critics and the scoffers come to find fault in you, and they can't because you're faithful. So then in stewards, it's required that a man be found faithful. There's a lot of things we can't be, but you can't be faithful by the grace of God. Uh, one of the things that defined him, he was faithful. Hmm. Uh, they couldn't find any fault in him. I wonder, can they find fault in us? So many lions. So few Daniels. Hmm. Huh? Well, preacher, you know, every now and then, we're just going to fail the grace of God. Well, see, I read an interesting quote. I wrote it down about those that fail the grace of God. 
a diamond with a fault or flaw is a lot better than being a pebble. So I'd rather just have my, my flaws and be a diamond than be a pebble or a hard head or you make up your own analogy. Nowhere in this Bible are we given a license to live lower than what God's called us to be. And he expects us all to be faithful. Why? Because he's faithful. And we're robed in his righteousness. We're in his right hand, engraved in his hand. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we sure do like to boast that we're forgiven. We sure do like to boast that we're saved. We sure do like to boast we're going to heaven. How about us boasting in the fact that we are what Christ expects us to be? Christian. Christ did not save us to live however we want to live. But again, there's so many lines, so few Daniels. He's defined by his fiber. He's defined by his faithfulness. He's, been, he's defined by his faultlessness. Look again. Verse number 4. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Oh, boy. So few Daniels. Mm -mm. No error, no fault found in him. Lord, have mercy. I ought to give the altar call right there. Talking about his fiber. Many lions, few Daniels, because of his faultlessness. There's no error, no fault. Now, that doesn't mean it wasn't sinless. That means that no accusation could stick. No indictment could be made because everything was disproved by his life. Can I say that Daniel's also defined by his fortitude? The plot that they came up with, they realized the only way we can find fault in him is concerning his God. And he prays three times a day, so that's what we're going to do. We'll go to the king and say, King, if anybody prays to you in the next 30 days, if it prays to anybody but you in the next 30 days, we're going to go in the lion's den. Well, the king puffed up pride. Hey, I like that idea. But look at verse number 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in, the cha in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Look at his fortitude. He prayed regardless of the consequences. Hmm? Regardless of what the king thought, regardless of what the law said, regardless of what the princes and presidents thought, regardless of what anybody would do against him or think of him, he prayed anyway. I appreciate more than most of you will ever know those that face hardship being as faithful as you are, knowing the consequences that you face. Some of you, when you get home. Some of you, when you get on the job. Some of you, even when you get in the car, you're still going to be faithful, regardless of what others say say or think listen I believe we're to live peaceable among men but it's better to obey God than man listen Ecclesiastes 10 4 says it this way if the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee leave not thy place for yielding pacifieth great offenses regardless of what the king says I'm going to do what the king of kings says mm, that's what made Daniel different he knew what was at stake and he didn't pray because he was smart Ellie. he prayed because it was right he prayed because every day he expected God to deliver Israel from under 
other rule, and he, every day he prayed that today would be the day that he got to go back to Jerusalem. Because he knew the prophecies, and he knew God was going to send deliverance to his people. And every day he prayed that today would be the day. Hmm? I wonder, do you pray every day for God's deliverance? So few Daniels. I was reading, and I came across what one writer wrote. Uh, I found this amazing. It's come out of an old book. I just happened to uh, be looking at something on Daniel, and, and I, I, I read this. And, and he, he talked about Daniel's praying. This is what he said. Why has God established prayer? Here's why. Listen. To communicate to his creatures the dignity of causality. When we pray, God reveals his cause in our life. See, the cause for us is to bring glory to God. God didn't create man to build a life and to build houses and own lands and own toys and live life. To... God created man that we might glorify him. But your own personal cause in the plan of God's realm is revealed through prayer. He went on to write this, Know thy dread power, a creature, yet a cause. Did not David, when he rose up to see the giant cursing the armies of God and blaspheming God, did not da David look at uh, 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 the men of Israel, the warriors, and said, Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause for you and I to be steadfast and be what God would have us to be? Uh, to be a light to this dark world? Uh, to be salt to the earth? Uh, uh, to be the husband of our house? To be the wife of our house? Uh, 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 to be the child at school that makes a difference? Uh, uh, not to succumb to worldly fears, uh, but to rise up uh, and say, regardless of the consequences, uh, I'm going to stay true to God and be what God God would have me to be. Amen. Most of you know I've not been feeling well. Miss Janet asked me tonight. She said, Brother Doug, surely you, you, you've got all these other preachers. Let somebody else preach. And I have confidence in all of them. But I have a cause. Regardless of how I feel, my Savior is still worthy for me to be in my place. Amen. Mm. Daniel was defined by his fortitude. Can I say this? Daniel was defined by his father. Look at verse 22. The king hollers down, ask him, is his God able? Look at verse 22. He said, my God. He didn't say Jehovah God. He didn't say the great God of glory. He didn't say the God of Israel. He didn't say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, no, Daniel said, my God. Uh, just like David said, my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, 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 Daniel's aligning himself with Almighty God. Uh, and hey, uh, we ought to be defined by our Father. Uh, hey, when they look at us, they ought to say, that is a Christian. Uh, they are Christ-like. Uh, they have a relationship with God. Uh, look at God all over their life. Uh, by the way, if God is not the central theme of your life, you will not have an excellent spirit. You will not have fortitude. Uh, you will not be found faultless. Uh, you will be. Just pray for the lions. So many lions. So few Daniels. Daniels also defined by his faith. Look at verse 23. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Here it is. Because he believed in his God. Amen. He's defined by his faith. I don't know a whole lot. But I know this, God has never let me down. 
I know this, God has never allowed anything to come into my life that He didn't already have the answer before I knew I had the thing. And come what may, He's faithful. So I'll just believe in Him. This might shock some of you. I've had Baptists let me down. Can I say this? Long before I was ever a pastor, I had leadership Baptists throw me to the wolves. Huh? Can I say? I've seen ugliness out of people that claim they were saved, claim that they loved God. But can I say, I have never found anything in Jesus but one who is altogether lovely. He's been everything He said He'd be in the Word of God and so much more. I love the Baptist church. I'm a Baptist by conviction. I'm a Baptist from my flat head to my flat feet. Hey, but more than a Baptist, I'm a Bible believer. And can I say, you, I love the church. And uh, you say, Brother Doug, if you wasn't a Baptist, what would you be? I'd be ashamed. That's what I'd be. Uh, 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 but listen, I am a Baptist, uh, but I don't uh, 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 just beat my chest about being a Baptist. Uh, I belong to God, uh, and I love God, uh, and God has never failed me. Uh, he'll go with you farther than the Baptist will go with you. Uh, he'll be more faithful than the Baptist will. Uh, there's nobody like him. Uh, you ought to put your faith in him. Uh, you ought to depend on him. Uh, every breath you take in your body ought to be a breath knowing that came from the hand of God uh, and God's able to sustain you uh, God's able to take care of you uh, no matter what you're going through uh, no matter how low the valley uh, God's already there uh, just yield yourself to the mighty hand of God uh, if you truly look back I'm talking about looking back by faith, Brother Clint. You look back, you'll see he's always been there. Why would he stop being there now? He's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Now, the real question tonight, yeah, there's so many lions, so few Daniels. The real question is, was, will you dare to be a Daniel? Will you truly dare to be a Daniel? Because if you draw that line in the sand, I'm going to be a Daniel, guess where you're going to end up? In a den of lions. Because they're going to prove you. Say, hi, they proved him. Uh -uh. Are you willing to dare to be a Daniel? Very few like him in the whole Bible. Matter of fact, I can read about Peter preach that great uh, message on the day of Pentecost. It didn't say Peter was without error or without fault. Right. Even John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, isn't said he's without error or without fault. Very few in the Bible do you ever find elevated to Daniel's status. You dare to be one? I mean, are you just satisfied being a mundane Christian, riding this thing out? I don't want to limp into heaven. I want to go in in a blaze of glory. Let me, let me just lay out to you what it's going to take if you're going to dare to be a Daniel. If you so dare, you'll become one who's interdependent. You must learn to abandon yourself to God. Regardless of whatever you face, you're going to throw yourself on the mercies of God. Regardless of being enslaved, regardless of being mocked, regardless of being thrown into dens of lions, you think Daniel didn't know they were plotting against him? Right. Can I say that was an everyday occurrence with Daniel? But he let it all roll off him like water off a duck's back because he was already abandoned to God. He didn't pray three times a day just to get out of this situation. He prayed three times a day because that's what he did. He walked and talked with God. 
and you must become interdependent. In other words, you can't depend on your church family. Thank God we got a good church family. Amen. And thanks God that this church family is one you can count on. Well, my best friends in the world are in here tonight. But friend, you've got to go beyond your church family. You've got to have a personal commitment of your life to God. Above and beyond anybody else, you must become interdependent. Can I say one who is willing to dare to be a Daniel is also one who must willing, be willing to become isolated. You read through Daniel's life, you find he has very few friends. You don't find anybody coming to his defense the day he's thrown into the den of lions. Even the king who loved him didn't defend him. Can I say, if you want to be to the status of Daniel, realize it's a lonely place. Matter of fact, you cannot become interdependent on God unless you're willing to sell out to said God. It's an isolated place. Can I say this? If you dare to become a Daniel, you'll also find you're one who's inclusive. You're all in. Now, Brother Brian, that's not saying, I'm saying I'm all in. You're all in. That means if they cut you, you bleed. I'm all in. You know, what else is there? That's, that's the difference between real Christians and those that play Christian. Real Christians, this is their life. And I say, I don't come to church because I have to. This is my life. Huh? Where else would we go? Even Peter told the Lord that, who else would we go to? You have the words of eternal life. But you're going to be all in. Your, your whole mind, your whole body, your whole soul was committed to serving the Lord. And by the way, being all in a lot of times does not mean limelight. You might be the one cleaning the toilets at midnight that nobody ever sees. You might be the seller and the feller that I preached on about 20 years ago. Nobody ever saw him, but everybody saw, got the blessing of what he did when nobody else was around. Are you willing to be all in or not? So many lines, so few Daniels. See, it's not easy to be a Daniel. Cost you something. They say this, if you dare to be a Daniel, you'll be one who's impactful. And I'm going to say this. Don't get mad at me. I'm just going to say the truth. Everybody wants to impact somebody else's life. Everybody wants to make a difference in somebody else's life. Everybody wants to point somebody to Christ. And you say, boy, I sure would like to be the one God uses and Jesus uses to impact somebody else's life. Everybody that's saved wants to do that, Brother Phil. The problem is, is very few want to pay the price in order to impact somebody's life. See, when everybody else is out playing, Daniel was praying. When everybody else was out being seen, Daniel's shut up, spending time with God. It amazes me, Brother Tony, when it comes to this book. A lot of preachers, they scour looking for that nugget, for that great message that everybody's going to look at them and say, oh, they preached that great message. You don't scour the book looking for a message. You scour the book looking for him.
Because you get to scouring looking for the message. Won't be long, Brother Ray, you're scouring the Internet. Or you're copying somebody else's message. I've seen it a hundred times. You can't be a Daniel and it be all about you. You're a Daniel when it's all about him. So I ask you tonight, Sunday school teacher, will you dare to be a Daniel? Deacons, will you dare to be a Daniel? Trustees, will you dare to be a Daniel? Choir members, will you dare to be a Daniel? Preachers, will you dare to be a Daniel? Young people, will you dare to be a Daniel? Lay people, will you dare to be a Daniel? We just dare to be a Daniel? There's so many lions, so few Daniels. You know what this world needs to see? They need to see the God of Daniel. But they'll never see the God of Daniel unless there's some Daniels put before them. Will you dare to be a Daniel? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, if you'd be kind enough, get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Friends, this thing's winding up. It's too short for us to be anything less than a Daniel. God, give us some Daniels. Give us some Elijahs, some Elishas. Give us some men and women of God that are known for God being the God of their life. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I pray you'd help me to dare to be a Daniel. Help these darling folks dare to be a Daniel. God, help this world to see our God in our lives. God, come what may, whatever we face, may they see the God of grace in our life. God, you may never call any of us to go to prison, but you may want to see if we're willing to. God, just speak to hearts now. You know the need of every heart here tonight. God, I pray especially, I know it wasn't a salvation message, but God, for somebody here tonight lost, I pray they'd give their heart to Jesus. God, I pray for every child of God to be found in the center of the will of God. I pray that everybody in here would dare to be a Daniel and excel what Daniel was able to do. God, I pray you'd use these dear folks to impact the world. And God, we'll bless you for it. Bless this invitation now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.